Hello everybody and welcome back. This is part 36 now of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. Uh, we're straight over to the bench uh, for this video which I hope will be a bit shorter than the other ones that I've uh, done for these uh, boats. Uh, and that's because a lot of the processes are just the same so I won't go through those again. Uh, if you need to work out what's going on uh, in some areas you'll just have to go back to uh, the previous videos where we made this 35 foot uh, admiral's barge. Uh, in this video we're going to be making these two 35 foot fast motor boats which are very similar. Uh, the cabin layout is just very slightly different so we're going to get straight into this uh, and get the parts out and we'll make a start. So we'll get the hulls off these are E30 so we have two of these to build. Give them a quick clean up. Someone commented last week uh, asking whether or not we'd got chickens, <laughs> um, which is what that the thought that the noise outside that you just heard was chickens from a farmyard. It isn't, it's uh, a pheasant, a male pheasant, who's fussing around the females who have all got chicks at the minute. And every so often, sometimes at very inconvenient moments for filming, he decides to announce that he's around. So what with the pheasants and the sheep in the field next door, it's not exactly studio conditions here. But uh, there's nothing I can do about the wildlife. Nothing I want to do about the wildlife. So they're part of the videos, I'm afraid. These don't need much of a clean up at all. There's just the three sprue gates to clean up and a tiny bit of a mould seam at the back here on the transom. But uh, nothing to bother about, really. But it's worth taking trouble over these detail parts. Although these boats are fairly small in comparison with the rest of the model, it's I think it's focusing on doing these details properly that it all comes together on the final uh, model. So a bit more of the Mr. Surfacer for these transom sprue gates. Just make sure that you get absolutely no trace of that sprue gate because it will show through the primer and the top coat so we can leave those two dry and then sand them down in a bit. Now we'll get all the etched brass parts that we need for these boats. There's quite a lot to these motor boats. There's quite a lot of detail inside them, let alone building the cabins. But uh, I'll concentrate on getting the cabins built first and then we can take a look at the detailed parts once we're happy that the cabin's going to go together properly. You can see there's a lot to these. We'll have to have our wits about us to get these together. So I think that's it. So I'm going to start off with the larger cabin first. This is the four cabin. I'll just put one set of parts to one side for the moment. You don't need to see those. 
So once I get them round the right way to start with, we've got some fold lines here in the middle. So this is a cabin with a little bit of a pitch roof on it. So I just want to work out which bends to make first and I'm going to have to do the pitches on the roof first I think. They're not going to need much. I'm going to have to judge how far to bend these just by folding the windscreen down at the front gradually until they meet. And as you'll know by now, we want to try and get these as close as we can, as soon as we can, because I don't really want to be going backwards and forwards with these bends. As you know, brass won't bend an awful lot. It'll snap after a while. So it's just a case of trial and error until, until we see that windscreen coming together at the front. And put the sides down. I'm not sure whether that's right. The front section of the screen doesn't appear to want to sit properly, but the side windows are definitely right. We'll just try it on the deck. This windscreen on this uh, cabin is slightly strange. It doesn't close up properly. And I can't understand why it doesn't because I've got it, I think, or at least I hope, uh, in the right position. The cabin sides match with the uh, lines in the deck but I just can't get this to close up properly. That's better. I've just adjusted that. I've got the pitch on the roof too steep. So it was sending everything out of alignment. But uh, that's much better now. So I just want to get into those corners and fix those first part of the screen in place and that'll start to secure the whole assembly hopefully. So just concentrate on the corners first. The angles on this cabin are uh, astonishing really when you look at how this part's been designed. The precision of working out uh, what needs to, which angle needs to go where is, it's unbelievable really. How on earth they work them out, I don't know. But when you get the part in the right place, the fit is exact. So if it doesn't come together, you know you've not folded it right. So that's perfect. Just needs a good clean up. You just need to be gentle doing the clean up because the frames are obviously pretty fragile. So it's just a gentle run over with the file just to get rid of the excess solder. Okay, so when you've got the angles right, that goes together. It doesn't look as though it's going to. But uh, the trick with getting this windscreen right doesn't look as though it's going to join up at one point. But uh, if it doesn't, it's because the pitch on the roof 
is not correct. When that's right, the windscreen goes into place properly. So, on yours, if you're building this, if it doesn't appear to want to close up, you just need to check the roof rather than forcing the windscreen together <laughs> because it's too delicate to do that you've got to get it so that it wants to join together so this next part is the rear side of this cabin which has a door in it of course it does and it also contains this stepped up roof here and that requires a curve fitting on the side so this edge of the roof curves down and you can tell that you need to bend that because Pontos have left us some grooves to help that curve to be made but it's quite a tight curve so I'm just going to have to think about how to do that. I don't think I can roll it. I think I'm just going to have to use the pliers and gradually bend it round. We can maybe adjust it when we get the roof folded down. This is a one millimetre drill. So I'm just trying to push that into that roof end just to try and curve it. My experience with these parts is that you've got to reinforce these joints because the way that the brass is etched makes it quite weak. So I just want to put a spot of solder just in the corners, just along the top. And that will just strengthen that joint. It doesn't need much, it's just enough to strengthen it. Because by the time we've got these curves done, we will be putting flex on these two sides so it would break eventually and again I'm just going to go now that I've got those curves at the edge of the roof where I want them I'm just going to solder those as well so they're not going to come apart again okay so that's properly soldered right the way into the corners now I think that's about right. So in theory that should sit down there with the roof on top. That's going to need solder as well to hold that together. You just check that it's in the right place. There's a lamp to fit to the front, but we'll do that when we come to do the rails. Better just check that for fit. I don't see why it wouldn't fit now, but it's just as well to check as you go along. Okay, that's the forward cabin done. I've just got the rails to put on the top. The next thing to do is the after cabin, which is this one. And unfortunately, that's got a curve on the roof as well. So as we did before I'll bend the roof and then we'll just curve those edges down to match the profile on the front bulkhead there. So you might be able to see there's a little so where it's curved at the edge here the roof just needs to curl down to meet that I just realised that I'm going to have to 
bend the sides first otherwise they won't tuck underneath that curve spotted that just in time okay, I want to get some solder on that before it breaks the join at the the fold at the front there is pretty weak so I need to just get some strength into that as quick as I can just check the fit of that just make sure it's been bent properly okay so that's the two cabins just have a look at these uh, bottom boards now they have to be folded at the back this uh, fold here or these folds that we've made just allow the positioning of this bench at the back what I might do with that is just tack it with some super glue at the front and then solder the underside. I think otherwise it would be fairly difficult to get that into exactly the right place. So that's what we'll do with that. So this is the deck and we have a fold to make here for this part at the back. And that tucks down behind this bench that we've just made. I think they're going to come out pretty well. Pretty happy with those. On these there's a solid screen just in front of the cockpit which we'll have to fold around. So that's this part here. So it's got a central section that's curved and then just two little wings that go down the side of the cockpit which are straight. The curvature is about the same as this exacto handle, so I'll use that just to form the curve on the front. Now I'm going to attach that part. <clears throat> it's going to be difficult to fit after painting and it's small enough for me to be able to just touch in with a brush. So I'm going to glue that. I'm going to have to do it off the screen. So gluing that part was a better option, I think, than trying to uh, solder it. I don't think I would have been able to do a good job of that. And that's a part that definitely needs annealing. It's too springy otherwise. I couldn't get it to conform to the curve that was needed until I annealed it and after that it was very uh, compliant really it stayed where I wanted it to go and depending on uh, the colour that I finally decide on it might be that that just needs picking out in white uh, but I may just leave it the deck colour we'll have to see I've just noticed that I actually fitted that to the second um, boat top rather than this one that I was doing but it's just exactly the same so there we go we've got a couple of fair leads on the back of these to fold up and as we did with the Admiral's barge there's another couple of bollards to fit to these as well as I did with the other one I just push these through the holes in the Pontos deck and leave a stub on 
and then I can just get some thin super glue on the underside and it will bind it very very small there are also two at the front unfortunately Those parts are insanely small, really. But it's strange when you get them on the model, even though they're so small, they do add something. Um, even though you might not be able to see exactly what they are, you get the impression that there's some detail there. Right, so that's one of the fast motorboats. The 35 foot ones anyway. The only things that these uh, parts need now are the rails which go along the top of the roof and this little searchlight spotlight on the front. I'll do the uh, rails off camera because uh, I've already done those today on the uh, other motorboat, the first one that we did, the Admiral's Barge. So I won't repeat that process. But I will make this lamp up, which is 760. So this is uh, another fold in half. I'm just wondering about that. I think it might be better to paint that separately and just add it at the end. If I don't lose it first. Yeah, I will do. I'll just paint that uh, black or I might even paint it, glue it and then paint it uh, afterwards. Back from the spray booth, uh, I've got all the main colours on. So the tan on the bottom boards. Uh, these have had uh, the seat added. And the wheel for the boat. Uh, and they were fixed in position uh, first before painting. Just makes a neater job. You can always touch the seat pads in later on. Obviously the four cabins that we've seen being built and the top deck of these boats in our red-brown colour. For the hulls of the boats, I've masked them off as I did with the Admiral's barge. But this time obviously the painted grey and I've added on this one the top wooden uh, rubbing strip in a natural wood tan. This is basically just the deck tan. So they've come out okay. I haven't gone through the masking process uh, on camera again. That was all done uh, in the last part when we built the Admiral's barge. So we can get these main components together now and then we can do some detail painting of them. So the first thing that I want to do is just remove these cocktail stick mounts. First thing to do is just position these bottom boards. I'm not going to glue them in, not at this stage anyway, because they need to go fairly far forward. because there's a little bulkhead on the top deck which sits behind the bench and I just want to make sure that there's enough room for that which there is. I don't think it needs glue anyway. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So let's use some of our MIG Ultra Glue So I'm getting mixed up with these. These uh, rear benches don't belong to these 35 foot boats. They belong to the 25 foot motorboats that I'll be showing you in the... I'll be showing you those in a separate video. So it just shows you you've got to be careful what you're doing with these. It's easy to get things mixed up. 
I'll just pick out the seats with some rubber black or the seat pads at least I think they're all right in the black just adds another bit of detail color to these boats I was just toying with the idea of whether to do them red or at least in a leather brown but uh, I'll stick them I'll stick with them in the black okay I need to put these top decks on now so I'll use thick CA for this And I just want to spot it along the side and I'm using thick because that just gives us a bit of time it won't dry straight away it's about 40 second drying time on this glue I don't want to risk smearing it so the dots are better than trying to apply it all the way along. I just need a bit of a touch up around the edge. <coughs> that one's gone on a bit better actually, there's no gaps on that one. So I'll just let those dry and in the meantime I'll sort the cabins out. So we've got the two cabins on each boat. And I'm not going to make the same mistake as I did last time where I fitted the cabins and then tried to glaze them. I'm going to do them before I fit them. And I actually found that the Crystal Clear did work on these. I was a bit worried that Crystal Clear was a bit too messy for doing these windows. But I tried it on one of the windscreens on the... Admiral's barge and it worked so I'm going to try it with these if it doesn't work we can always use glazing on them the crystal clear will uh, wash off so it's not a problem if it doesn't work let's give it a go I'll just do one side at a time and as soon as that's dried I can then turn it over. If I start moving it around the chances are that the crystal clear will pop out. While I'm waiting for this crystal clear to dry, I just want to paint the fair leads on these boats. And there's a couple of bollards as well that just need picking out. I'll do that in white. These metal parts on these boats may well have been uh, black or grey. I don't think it's clear but either of those colours would just be lost on these so you might as well not have the detail of the fair leads and bollards on because you're just not going to see them in any colour except white I don't think I'm going to carry on with this glazing now. Get uh, these cabins fully glazed and then we can get them fitted to the boats. The crystal clear is all dry now on these cabins. But uh, before I fit them I just want to give these boats a coat of uh, clear varnish. That's just to level them all out. I've done a little bit of brush painting on them so the varnish will just uh, level the finish off a little bit. 
obviously I can't do that with the cabins uh, because I've already glazed them and I don't want to miss the glazing but uh, we'll just give the holes a quick squirt with some matte varnish right so that's the boats varnished there's a coat of uh, flat varnish on those it's just leveled the finish up so uh, I'm happy with that can get these cabins on now the crystal clear has dried nicely and I'm going to be fitting these with some of the uh, MIG Ultra Glue I just want to check the fit the forward cabin rests just behind the ship's wheel the pilot's position the difficult thing with these boats is finding somewhere to apply the glue because the contact points are so small on them but in this case I'm going to put some at the front here just along this edge and another drop just along the side And with that in position you can just with a dampened toothpick just wipe off that slight bit of excess there I think we've got a bit on the other side there so this glue cleans up really nicely do the same with the after cabin that worked fairly well These are the flagstaffs and there should be a hole. I can just see a hole in the deck but of course with the paint and the primer it gets a bit gummed up. But uh, that's cleared it out, it's just wiggled it around a little bit and it's clear so I can put some glue on that. That does lean back slightly but we just want to make sure it's vertical. And these are the lamps that we made up earlier and they uh, they fit on the roof these parts might just need a couple of coats because uh, it's not primed and this lacquer paint's fairly thin it's virtually airbrush ready so it uh, often needs a couple of coats but that's good on this very fine detail because it doesn't flood it these are the crutches for these motorboats but I'm not going to fit them on video we've done those before uh, on the other boats so they're simply the trumpeter plastic ones I prefer them to the Pontos crutches and they, they just need a little bit of detailing with the Pontos uh, brackets on them okay so that's the 35 foot fast motorboats done they've come out pretty well I prefer the glazing using crystal clear uh, it's much easier than using the acetate so I'll be doing that for all future boats I didn't think crystal clear would work on them but but it does and I'm pretty happy with how they've come out it's very difficult to get a seamless joint with the top of the deck the etch brass and if you look directly from the side you can see that gap along the side but it's very difficult to eliminate that it would be possible I suppose to 
build these uh, and use filler on them and then paint them afterwards but uh, it's a balance really I prefer to get the crisp detailing of painting the parts separately it'd be very difficult to get the uh, straight line between the white and the red of the deck if it was all assembled beforehand uh, and trying to paint the interior colour differently as well would be quite difficult so I think all in all uh, that's the best way to to do these and just accept that there's that tiny little gap it's v it's hardly visible uh, to the naked eye at normal viewing distance but uh, these macro shots are pretty cruel I'll often think that some things come out really nice but then I look at them at this sort of distance uh, on the camera and I see all sorts of mistakes on them uh, but it's best just to ignore it and get on with the build if you fiddle around with them too much you're going to make them worse so that's it for this particular video uh, as I said this is an extra one to try and catch up on these boats and I will be posting another uh, video to do the 25 foot fast motor boats uh, sometime over the weekend but the next episode will be moving on to the quarter deck I want to move on to something different we've been doing these boats for three weeks now so we'll be doing the quarter deck in the normal Friday night slot tomorrow uh, that'll be part 37 and then we'll follow up quickly over the weekend hopefully to get those 25 foot motorboats finished hope to see you again for the regular tomorrow night where we'll be doing that quarter deck work so until then look after yourselves everybody stay safe uh, and i'll see you next time bye for now